Good morning, Third Baptist. Good morning, Third Baptist. It is a good morning, a good day to be in the good house of the Lord. It is good to have a reasonable portion of strength and health this morning. It's good to be enclosed in our right mind this morning. It's just a good day to be in the day, land of the living this morning. But everything that good comes from God. So we just want to give God praise this morning. We want to praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to the excellence of his greatness. Let everything, let everything that has breath praise the Lord this morning. Come on and put your hands together and join in with the choir as they come forth with our opening selection. from 
It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter whether you're up or whether you're down. It doesn't matter whether you're having a good day or a bad day, that God is worthy to be praised. So come on, let's just put your hands together and let's give God the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. He is worthy of the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You all may be seated. It is time now for the scripture. The scripture will be coming from 1 first, first Corinthians 1, 17 through 19. Again, that 1 Corinthians 1, 17 through 19. If you're all ready, let's say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. And it reads. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. God's words are spirit. God's words are life. And every word of God is true. And let, the, let God bless the holy readers and the holy listeners of his word. We will now have prayer by Deacon Ron Thompson. Good morning, church. I hope we're all in good spirits this morning. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. Let us all bow our heads. Father God, once again, we come before you with humble hearts. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for a day we will never see again, Father God. Thank you for all that you've done for us in the past, Father God. Bless us, Father God. Bless us as we go forward in this service, Father God. Bless the speaker of the hour, Father God. Wrap your arms around her, Father God. Oh, yes, just, just give her the, the wisdom to bring your word forth, Father God. Let your word fall on good ground, Father God. Oh, yes, let it bury into the soil, Father God, and grow. Grow into our hearts, Father God. And as we um, go through this service, Father God, we just want to say that uh, if we've done anything in vain in your name this week, Father God, just forgive us. Forgive us for our sins, Father God. Bless every member of this church, Father God. Bless the choir as they bring forth songs of Zion, Father God. Oh, yes, let their voices ring out, Father God. Oh, yes, let us all praise your name. Bless the ministries, Father God. Bless the sick and the shed-in, Father God. Oh, yes, Father God. Those who are in prison, Father God. Bless them, Father God. And, Father God, we're sending out a, a special prayer, Father God, for, for this nation, Father God, as we go through some trials and tribulations, Father God. Oh, yes. Please, Father God, we are asking you, Father God, we are begging you, Father God, to lead us, lead us in, in what you would like us to do, Father God. Oh, yes, Father God. And as, as we um, close this prayer, Father God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all and everything that you've done, Father God. And we just can't thank you enough for this 180 plus years now. We're on the plus side of 180, Father God. We've been around a while, Father, because this old ship is iron. 
And we just want to say we can't thank you enough, Father God, for, for giving us this, the wind in our sails to keep on, Father, keep on going, Father God. Oh, yes, in the precious name of the one and only, the one who died and was risen on the third day, Father God, the precious name of Jesus Christ, let this church say amen. time for our notices and announcements. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The following are our announcements for November the 6th, 2022. To our radio listeners, our services can be heard on FM 103.1 starting at 10 a.m. Sister Vicki Ham of the media ministry will be coordinating with members to update your church information. If you have not given her and her your church info, if you have not given her your new address or phone numbers or updated your information, please do so as soon as possible. Please consider getting vaccinated, obtaining your COVID-19 booster shot and some kind of shot inoculation shot <laughs> something has been re reformulated to tackle new variants of the coronavirus please wear your face mask while inside the sanctuary and please remain home if you're feeling ill as a reminder youth sunday day, sunday school is conducted at 10 8, 8 45 each sunday ladies and gentlemen Please remember your pledges. Contributions may be given via the following means. Church track giving through electronic means, the United States Postal Service, and there's nothing like giving in person. Please register to vote and vote on November the 8th. The deadline for voter registration is November the 8th. All women are required to meet with 
with Reverend Brenda Cherry immediately following worship service on November the 13th. Our condolences are extended to the following families in our family circle who have suffered sickness, loss, or bereavement. Sister Verona Chamberlain Grant family. Her funeral will be November the 12th at Bland's Funeral Home at 1 p.m. Again, oh, okay, Sister Verona Chamberlain Grant and family, her brother's funeral, her brother's funeral God um, bless Sister Verona. I'm glad she's still here with us. Verona Bland Funeral Home at 11:12 at 1 p.m. Brother Franklin Wiggins and family. They have suffered loss, and the funeral for his sister will be at Higher Way Ministries at um, November the 12th at 1 p.m. The family of Sister Ethel Bellamy. That funeral will be November the 10th at 12 p.m. Here at Third Baptist. Okay, it's not on here. Okay, yeah. And Deacon David Smith and family, the services for his son and son, stepson, will be here. Uh, November the 12th at 2 p.m. Okay, and just a reminder that prayer is the key and faith unlocks the door. God bless you all, and we're just going to continue on right now with offering. What time is it, church? Deacon and ushers take charge.
Father, we thank you for the gift of which we have received. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless the ones who gave, bless the ones who wanted to give, didn't have to give. We ask you to bless these tithes and offerings for the uplifting of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. church it doesn't take long for us to get to the good part of the day now it is preaching time and we will have none other than our own Reverend Brenda Cherry so I want you all to take your right hand and point it towards Reverend Cherry and say mama Cherry we love God's word mama Cherry we hungry for God's word. Feed us, Mama Cherry, and quench our thirst with the word of God. Hallelujah. Preach on, Mother Cherry. The next voice you will hear after the choir would be the voice of our very own Reverend Brenda Cherry.
Thank you, Lord. They on their way. Give God a hand. Thank you, choir. That was a blessing. Thank and praise God for another day, another opportunity to stand to declare, thus saith the Lord. Amen. Our scripture has already been read. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you, dear God, for this another day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us safely this way one more time. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to worship in the beauty of holiness. We pray, Heavenly Father, all things will be done in decency and order, and that you will get all glory, honor, and praise. Use me, Heavenly Father, to your glory. And dear God, I will give you praise, honor, and glory, and bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, I do pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Some years ago, before I started in ministry, Cherry said something to me that has stayed with me. He said, Brenda, let me tell you something. Listen, let me share this with you, and you got to try your best to remember it, because it's real important. First of all, this ain't about you. It ain't about none of us. He said, a message ain't complete without the cross. The cross is why we are where we are. It's important for our salvation, and it's God's love for mankind. So on that note, I'd like to share with you from the thought, don't forget the cross. Our text says, for the preaching of the cross, or in some translations, the message of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The word foolishness is defined as the result of a person missing, misusing the intelligence that God has given him or her, and using their reasoning skills which may result in making the wrong decision. The word foolish is found many times in the Bible and is described as the one who refuses to acknowledge God's ample evidence of who he is, his love for us, his desire that we might come to know him through Jesus, and his provision for us throughout our lives. When people refuse to believe God's word, they will eventually find out one day, one way or another, at one time or another, how foolish they really are. To some, the foolish are considered to be ridiculous, brainless, or self-involved, assuming that they know all that needs to be known in the universe. Do anybody here know anybody who thinks they know everything? And when you see them coming, you want to run the other way. Amen is what I said to them. The book of Proverbs tells us to stay away from a foolish man for you will not find knowledge on his lips. And the word folly used here can be described as foolishness or the lack of good sense. When Paul speaks of the foolishness of God, he is not implying that God is foolish. Rather, he is saying that since God's way of reasoning is in accord with the things of the spirit, it confounds or frustrates the reasoning of this world. God's way is wiser than human reasoning because spiritual things are wiser than worldly things. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than any man's strength. In other words, church, our God is omniscient. He knows all things. His knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding is never-ending. Nothing is unknown, nothing escapes him knowing about it. Each act in history is known to God clearly and with certainty before it even happens because of his foreknowledge. Here the Apostle Paul wanted the Corinthian church as well as us today to do three things. First, he wanted them to be aware of the importance of the significance of the cross because it's part of God's plan of salvation 
that was set in place in Genesis 3.15 when the serpent deceived Eve by telling her not to believe or disregard what God had told her or Adam that they were not to touch or eat from the tree of life in the middle of the garden. For if they did, they would surely die. And their disobedience caused them to be exiled from the garden of Eden, which tells us and proves that Satan is the master of lies. Secondly, he, want us, he wanted us to appreciate, to treasure the validity of the sacrifice, the love of God that was made on our behalf, as seen in John 3.16. And thirdly, he wanted us to recognize that the crucifixion did happen, that Jesus was the sacrificial offering for the sins of mankind, and to accept what the Bible teaches us. All sins were judged at the cross, and payment, and payment was made through the shed blood of Christ. Jesus was a perfect man, the only son of God. Brothers and sisters, we remember nothing else. We have to remember that Jesus died for us. He was separated from God because of our sin. We have to remember that he bore the burden of our sins upon himself. The cross is the principle, the principle or the main symbol of Christian religion that recalls or brings back to memory the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the redeeming benefits of his passion and his death, and the symbol of his love for us. It is the intersection of God's love and justice. It and all that it represents is the greatest display of power of God. It is a sign of death and hope, both at the same time. The first reaction to the cross is that it is foolishness. In the Roman Empire, it was the lowest form of punishment a person could undergo. To some, the cross meant one thing and one thing only, death by the most painful and humiliating means a human being could develop. It was meant to inflict the maximum amount of torture and shame upon its victim. The Romans did it so that the people would be scared of them and scared of crossing them. Jesus was a perfect example, even in his death, that this was a criminal death by crucifixion. It was horrible. It was set aside for criminals. And because of his obedience, God exalted him and multiplied his greatness. He has been given the greatest of all names. And because of his greatness, one day in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in reference. He is worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Those who are perishing are those who are hell-bound. The idea behind perishing is the loss of well-being. The word does not carry the idea of extinction, but the idea is more qualitative and not quantitative to us who are saved. Paul sets in sharp opposition those who are being saved to those who are perishing. We all fall into one of these categories. Saving is the work of God who is, who is in the process of saving the saints. The cross is the power of God to the believer. It is the ultimate expression of God's love. Paul's contrast power to wisdom of the previous clause. We would expect that Paul would say that the gospel is the wisdom of God, but he says that the gospel is the power of God and is more than a good suggestion, but produces a dynamic effect, for it is fit to attain to its end. Yes, yes. The cross is the most recognizable symbol in the world that represents the provision of a new life for believers. Because of it and the crucifixion of Christ, we are not only forgiven, cleansed, and set free, we have a whole new life and a new destiny through Jesus Christ. We are changed from the inside 
for he renews our mind, changes our hearts, and our desires. It is because of the cross that we receive new mercy every morning. When Jesus died on the cross and then buried, it didn't stop there. He could not be closed in a tomb and forgotten through the ages. The final picture of what the cross provides lies in the powerful resurrection of our Lord because he did not stay dead. He took the sting from death and victory from the grave. His power broke through, and that same power is alive within each of us today. As believers, God gives us the power of the Holy Spirit, living and moving through us each day. The power of the cross of Jesus Christ reconciles humanity with our heavenly Father. In him and in him alone can we find or ever be able to find forgiveness of sin. When Christ arose, he gave us a new life in him. Now we are new creations. He paid it all on the cross at Calvary. The Bible says that the cross is foolish to some, meaning it's foolish to those who don't believe, who won't believe, to those who can't see it or who don't want to see. It's foolish to those who don't want to understand the power of it. It's foolish to those who don't believe that there is life after death, to those who believe in a higher power, yet can't tell you, don't know, can't explain who or what this high power is about. Five things here are extremely important to all of us. First, the cross teaches us that sin will separate us from God, as seen in Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. A simple way to define sin is the act of going against God and his ways. It hardens us. Romans 5, 8 shows us that God showed his love to us while we were yet sinners. Not only are we separate from God when we are ruled by sin, but Colossians 1.21 says we were his enemies. This separation from God created by sin can doom us to an eternity away from him, except for one thing that would help us, and his name is Jesus Christ. Secondly, the cross also teaches us about forgiveness. The Bible teaches us that forgiveness takes sacrifice even on our part toward others. It brings a forgiver peace of mind and can lead to the feelings of understanding, empathy, and compassion for the one who hurt you. Romans 5, 8 again says, but God commended his love to us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible clearly defines forgiveness as the choice to release someone from an offense and love them through the lens of a transformed spirit. It brings a kind of peace that helps you go on in life. Holding on to resentment can sour you and keep you from finding peace. When we can't forgive, our emotional wounds can't close and won't heal. Third, the cross teaches us about success. Jesus' death may be considered a failure to some. Yet in John 19, 30, as he was dying, he said, it is finished. He completed what God sent him to do, which tells us we too can be successful in doing God's will. Fourth, the cross teaches us about love. In John 15, 13, Jesus says, greater love has no man than this, than one lay down his life for his friends. Jesus taught us about love by freely dying on the cross as the perpetuation for our sin. He says in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will obey what I command. And last but not least, fifth, the cross teaches us about Jesus' drawing power. In John 12, 32, he said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. 
His death on the cross is to draw us to him for salvation. And above all, church, be mindful that the power is in the gospel, in the good news about Jesus, and not in the cross. The cross is a reminder of what happened at Calvary and why it happened. It's a reminder that Jesus came down from God to teach us how to live. He died and he was buried. But he arose three days later with all power in his hands. It is not the cross that draws us to God, but rather Christ who died on the cross. And as I close, when I started researching this scripture, my mind was blown. I was reminded that there is so much that we don't know and we won't know until we get home. We could tell some things, but we can't tell all things. But this one thing I believe, and I have read more than once, and that is without the pain and the reality of the cross, without the sacrifice on Jesus and our behalf, without the power of resurrection and his final victory over sin and death, we would still be hell-bound, still groping around and lost in darkness. In all of history, there is not one more redeeming, liberating, or costly sacrifice than the cross at Calvary that Jesus died on. Paul was right. To some, the cross doesn't make sense because it's foolishness to them. They don't understand, won't accept, and don't accept it, and live blinded to its power. They are those who think and believe that there is another way to get in heaven. They don't know that scripture teaches that Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. They don't know that you cannot overcome the power of the cross and resurrection of Christ. It can't be conquered, can't hide it, can't shut it away, can't ignore it, and you sure can't destroy it. And even though our bodies die, we have hope of everlasting life through the cross. The cross transformed death from a dead end to a doorway into the presence of our Lord. Jesus is the only one who conquered sin and death. It's because of the cross that death of believers is the doorway to heaven. It's the only way to peace and liberty and everlasting life with God. It provides forgiveness of sin, freedom to those who believe, freedom from the shackles of sin, from disgrace, fear, hopelessness, despair, guilt, and eternal separation. Through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we now have a new life, a new walk, a new talk, and a new mind. We have brand new mercy every day. We have an eternal home. We don't have to wonder about life after death. Remember the power of the cross didn't end when Jesus died. His death opened the door of salvation to all people, and the power of it remains, remains today. Jesus died to bring us near to God. Because of it, we now have access to a heavenly blessing. He was the perpetuation, the substitute, that you and I may have life and have it more abundantly and live forever in eternity with God. It was at that old rugged cross that our Savior died. In the sacrifice of Jesus' crucifixion, we are shown the depth of God's love for us and the link taken to save us from sin. This man gave us life. He was beaten, bruised. He was beaten and he was bruised, but he did it all for us. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He suffered greatly for us. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And in his resurrection, we see God's triumph over death, pointing toward the promise of eternal life in his presence. Because of his sacrifice, our lives will never be the same. I thought about that song that Gladys Knight used to sing when she recalled her mane was the best thing to have happened to her. But then I remember that James Cleveland came along and said, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to any of us. Our new life in Christ is the best gift we've ever had. It can never be taken away. 
never ever lose his power and never cease to exist. He died for our sins, the righteous and the unrighteous, to bring us to God. No man took his life. He gave it freely. And imagine the pain and the horror he went through. Imagine or do you remember when you stepped on a nail or stuck something in your hand, but his hands was bored through with big nails. Imagine the agony he suffered for you and he suffered for me. And God, I thank you. We serve a mighty, mighty, mighty good God. We serve a God who sits high and looks low, a God who loves us, a God who stands by us, a God we refer to as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He's Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Jesus didn't have to do what he did, but thank God he did. I say glory to his name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Glory to his name. The song says he lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, our hope is here. Because he lives, all sin is gone. Because Jesus lives, we are where we are. Because Jesus lives, we have what we have. Because Jesus lives, we will live with him in eternity. Because Jesus lives, because of the cross, Jesus lives. And we have life more abundantly. And God, I thank you. I thank you. All this week I kept thinking about that show that used to come on TV years and years and years ago about Fantasy Allen. Y'all remember that? And you remember how the little man, that every time a plane came in, he cried, the plane, the plane, the plane. Where for us today, we can cry the cross, the cross, the cross. And we thank God for the cross. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Whew, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. It was at the cross where we first saw the light. And the burdens of our heart rolled away. It was there by sight when we first saw the light. And now, we ought to be happy all the day. Thank you, God. Ooh, thank you, God. The cross. Let me share this with you before I go on. This was the hardest message I ever had to get together. I searched and searched and searched. I worked on this for over a month. Nothing would come. But this week, sitting at my computer, working on something else, a light went off. I felt the presence of God. And as I was going through other things, it popped up, the cross. And all I could say was, thank you, Lord. Glory be to God, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And as I praised him, things began to pour. I had a hard time typing and keeping up, but it kept pouring. So I thank and praise God for that, amen? Thank you, Lord. Maybe there's somebody here who has never accepted Jesus Christ as your savior and the pardon of your sins. You would like to do so. You would like to get to know him. You would like to be a part of what we talked about, the family of God. Now is the time. Now is the time, brothers and sisters. Maybe you are out of the ark of safety and you're looking for a church home. Our doors are open. We are not perfect. But when you find a perfect church, please call me and let me know. Now is the time. Will that be one? Bless the Lord. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. 
We thank you, God. Yes, sir. When I'm in awesome wonder, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Consider all thou world thou hand has made. I see the stars and I hear the rolling thunder thou power throughout the universe display and when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die. I scared can't take it in. There on the cross, my Morning, church. We have Tamara Blue coming by Christian Experience to Amen. join. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You may have a seat. Yes. Thank you. Give God a round of applause. Thank you, Lord. Now, for the right hand of fellowship. Good morning, church. Good morning. Is Sister Sheila Jefferson here today? Mm -hmm. Sheila, please come forward. Amen. 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 It is with great pleasure that we present to you this certificate of membership, which acknowledges that you have joined the Third Baptist Church family by Christian experience, and you will receive the right hand of fellowship today 
the sixth day of November in the year 2022. Yeah, and we welcome you yeah. to the Third Baptist Church. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Wait a minute, Sheila. Sheila. Thank you. We bless the Lord for all that has been said and done. And now we come to a very important part. Amen. It was on a Thursday night in the upper room that Jesus instituted the Last Supper. He identified his betrayer, gave the disciple words of encouragement and prayed over them. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Does everybody have a cup? Everybody? Reverend Williams, would you pray over our bread and Reverend Bullock, our cup, please. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for all of the works of Jesus Christ on the cross, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for his body that was broken and bruised for our sins, Lord God. Lord God, we even thank you for the blood that was shed for us, Lord God. Lord God, may you bless this cup, Lord God. Bless the bread, Lord God. As turn it into a spiritual purpose, Lord God. And we just give you thanks, Lord God, as it is a reminder of the body, that, of Jesus' body that was broken for us. Let us all say amen. Father God, we just thank you right now, Lord God, for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Lord God, we ask that this cup that represents your blood be turned to a spiritual use, Lord God, that we will understand the meaning and the significance of it all. Lord God, that we will know that one day we will drink it anew with you in your kingdom. So God, right now, touch us, Lord God. Father God, let us self-examine ourselves that we understand, Lord God, that without 
the faith, Lord God. If we are sinful in our lives, Lord God, that we need to clean ourselves up. And it is with this blood, this cup, Lord God, that you did it for us. So God, right now we ask that you bless the cup and we take it, Lord God, within our hearts and within our minds. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. May we all eat together. Now, may we all partake of the cup together. And thank God for this opportunity to do so. Maybe there's someone who wants prayer. Someone who feels the need of prayer. You can stand, you raise your hand, or come forward. It's praying time, church. It's praying time. We can't get around it no way we try. With so much going on around us, it's praying time. And we need God's help to make it through these last and evil days. We need all the help we can get. Help that only God Almighty is able to provide for us. And we thank God for being there for us for being there with us, knowing that it's hard. Brother Frank, would you come forward, please? Frank Wiggins, Deacon Dave, would you come forward, please? Miss Dobin, would you come forward on the behalf of Miss Bell and Miss Family, please? We have families, y'all, who are hurting. Family who are going through despair. Families burdened by the passing of a loved one. And it's so good to know that we have someone to turn to in our hour of need. For we need him every hour. We need him every day. Amen. Reverend Bullock, would you bless us, please? Father God, we come to you right now, Lord God, trusting and leaning and depending on your word, Lord God. Your word that said in this hour and in this time that you will be with us until the end of age. Lord God, your word that says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Your word that says that you will never forsake us nor leave us. So Lord God, I ask right now, Lord God, that you touch your people, those that have stepped out on faith, Lord God. Whatever it is in their hearts and in their minds, Lord God, whatever it is that they need right now, Father God, I ask that you grant it unto them. Lord, we go that some of them are mourning right now, Lord God, but you said that you will give us a crown of beauty for ashes, Lord God. You will give us a garment of praise for the spirit of despair. So, Lord God, be with them in the midnight hour. Sister Verona, Lord God, she's lost her brother, Lord God. I ask that you touch her family, Lord God. Father God, I ask that you touch Sister Bellamy's family. Joy and Roy, Michelle, CJ, all the children, the grandchildren, Lord God. You know what they stand in need of in this hour. And Lord God, I ask that you touch Brother Franklin, Lord God, and his family, Lord God, in the loss of his sister. Lord God, be with them in their hour of need, Lord God. And Brother Dave and his wife, Lord God, in the loss of their son, Lord God, only you, Lord God, can be with them and comfort them in this hour. For you said that you will send a comforter to us, Lord God. And you said, Lord God, for everyone else that is out here today, Lord God, whether it be sickness, Lord God, whether it be calamity, Lord God, whether it be chaos, Lord God, whether it be confusion, Lord God, whatever it is in their body, in their homes, Lord God, you said that your name is Jehovah Shalom, that you can bring peace to them, Lord God. And Father God, you also said in your word that you can do above all that they believe, whatever they think 
speak, Lord God, according, Lord God, to the power that worketh within them. So, Lord God, we ask that you bless from the pulpit, Lord God, all the way to the front door, in the choir stand, in the fellowship hall, all along the walls of this house of God. And, Lord God, let it rain down into their homes, Lord God. Touch the walls and the doors that they may enter, Lord God, right now. For you said in your word, Lord God, that you careth for us all. So cast your cares upon him, Lord God. Bring them to this altar and leave them there. Don't take them back right now, Lord God. So God, bless your people, Lord God. I ask that you touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord God. And bless all of the households they represent right now, Lord God, in this place, Lord God, today. Because, God, right now we know that there is nothing that we can do without you. And, Lord God, with you, Lord God, we have more than the whole world that is against us. So, Lord God, right now continue to keep us, Lord God, and we shall be kept. Continue to bless us, Lord God, and we shall be blessed. Strengthen us so that we may be strong, Lord God, knowing full well where our help comes from. So, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, for this hour, for what has been said, what has been done, to keep our mind not just on the cross, Lord God, but the one that died on the cross. So, Lord God, be with us as we leave this place. Grant us traveling mercy, Lord God. Let us find our homes, Lord God, in better shape than what we left them. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. It is in Jesus' name. It is in Jesus' name. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray this prayer, hence now and forevermore. Let us all say amen, amen, and amen. And now as we leave this place, but never by his side, may the love of God and the sweet communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forevermore. Let us all go in peace and say amen. <laughs>